Malaria is a major cause of illness and death on our planet. About half the world's population are at risk of infection and much of the disease burden is in Africa. Children are particularly vulnerable. A groundbreaking clinical trial for a new malaria vaccine is currently underway as a collaboration between the Royal College of Surgeons in Dublin and the Jenner Institute here in Oxford. Professor San McConkey is Head of International Health and Tropical Medicine at Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and a principal investigator on this trial. As a young doctor, after I'd finished my basic training, I went and worked for a couple of years in a mission hospital in Sierra Leone. Every night in the rainy season, six or ten kids would come in with severe malaria and they required emergency treatment. No matter what you do, sadly, maybe one or two of those children die. And that, as a doctor, that's very, very sad and you struggle and try to do your best. But no matter what you do, it, it, it doesn't work. I uh, managed to get sick myself and by uh, not using mosquito and I ended up having fever and chills one day, uh, feeling body ache, headache. They tested me on malaria, so I ended up taking quinine. Fortunately, uh, I, I, I was delighted to be alive the next day, but over that night I was um, feverish and delirious and um, writing little letters to my friends saying how much I cared for them, look after my wife please, so I really have been through it. Developing a vaccine for malaria has been the target of vigorous and determined research for decades, but we have yet to see a vaccine that can deliver efficient and concrete results. We have treatments for malaria in place already, are they not enough? Unfortunately, there's drug resistance in some parts of the world, and unfortunately, that's likely to increase. So as a long-term control strategy, treatment is very limited, and that's why we need a vaccine. In, in, in this trial, we've taken one of the many proteins from the malaria parasite and put it into a, a carrier virus. That virus is injected into the volunteers, and it, it allows the, the body to make the malaria protein that sort of tricks the human immune system into making an immune response to that. And then that immune response, we hope, will be protective. And we're doing blood tests to see, is the immune response strong or weak and how broad it is. We look at both antibody responses and we also look at T cell responses. And we've got data that T cells are important at preventing the liver stage of malaria. If you can stop malaria going through the liver, then that protects the people who've, who've got malaria. When a person is bitten by an infected mosquito, the parasites that are transmitted through the saliva travel through the person's bloodstream until they get to the liver. There they infect a liver cell and make copies of themselves. After about five days, the parasites are released into the bloodstream and it is only then that the symptoms begin. So we hope that we'll generate enough T cells that the T cells can detect the infected liver cells and then get rid of them before the person even gets sick. Phase one of the clinical trials for the vaccine took place earlier this year at the RCSI Education and Research Centre in Beaumont Hospital. Today, Katrina, we, we've invited uh, volunteers who are participating in the phase one study. They, they have agreed to uh, be vaccinated by these new malaria vaccines. We want to see, is this malaria vaccine safe? Does it cause a, a lot of redness or local side effects? Does it cause systemic side effects? And then more importantly, what's its immune response? We're, we're measuring the immune response to the vaccine. When I was saying it to a lot of my friends, they thought I was crazy and they definitely wouldn't want to be involved in anything like that. But I'm doing a PhD in Trinity at the moment, so I was kind of interested in the scientific aspect of it. When I was working in Sudan, I was building schools and you'd see a lot of the local people um, getting sick with malaria and it's like getting the flu over there. But unfortunately, you can die from it. I'd love to be able to say in 20 years time that I was part of the vaccine which got rid of malaria. Hopefully, I'll be able to say that, but let's see. Fingers crossed. It's all a really relaxed environment. There's no scary machines or anything like that. And it's all pretty much just, you know, talking to a friendly nurse for a few minutes and filling out a really easy questionnaire. Other people take crazy risks, you know, they, they, they do a bungee jump or something. I was like, this is my very controlled, safe environment risk I'm taking, and it's for the greater good. That's a good way of um, making your mother feel comfortable. Exactly. I, do you want me to do this or do you want me to do a bungee exactly. jump? Exactly. <laughs> this is the first time really that we've been doing something like this in Ireland. So it's a very much a first for Ireland, and I'm personally very excited and delighted about that. Also, some of this work is funded through Irish Aid to the European Vaccine Initiative, who are actually funding the work. So indirectly, it's Irish taxpayers and Irish public who are actually supporting this activity. 
Phase one of the trial had positive results, taking this critical research one step further. Phase two has already started here in Oxford University. Adrian Hill is the principal investigator of phase two of the trial. We're just at the stage of taking a vaccine that we know is safe from the trial in Dublin. We know it produces a good immune response from that trial, and we're asking the question, how effective is it? What we do is we infect people with malaria parasites using mosquito bites. They go home for a week, not much happens because the parasite's in their liver, they don't notice anything. Then by about day 11, they should get malaria, and we obviously watch them very carefully during that period. Or you hope they won't get malaria because your vaccine is tackling that liver stage. Exactly. So it should clear or kill all the parasites in the liver. None come out into the blood and we test the blood and see no infection. So this is where we keep the uh, mosquitoes. Wow, look at all of them. And they're at different stages so of that's development. A proper swarm of mosquitoes. Well, the good news is these do not have malaria, but of course, sometimes we want to give them malaria, so we feed them on infected blood. And how do you expose the volunteers in your trial to the mosquitoes? We invite people to pop their arm over a cup, a smaller one than this, with exactly five mosquitoes. So it's very important that we don't have a few uninfected mosquitoes, that would be too low a dose. And uh, then you take it away, dissect it, and look inside the salivary glands of the mosquito and you can literally see the parasites and even count them. Mm. I'm itchy just looking at them and even I know they're not, you know, they don't have malaria, they're not going to do anything to me. In terms of the future, when will we actually have an effective malaria vaccine? It depends on how effective you want it to be. There is a vaccine at the moment that's developed by a major pharmaceutical company that gives some limited efficacy. I think we need a vaccine better than that that's probably five or six or seven years away, but that I think will be really useful. I think one of the great things about this job is that you're able to take some of the really cutting edge scientific technologies, stuff we didn't know about a few years ago, and apply that to a, to a, to a real world problem. And this is something that, you know, there's no commercial drive to do. Companies can't justify investing lots of money in it. So people in the public sector who have access to that technologies actually have to lead on this. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. We're part of a, a large global scientific endeavour that's very focused on a very important aim, which is preventing children, particularly in developing countries, getting and dying from malaria. Ten years ago, a lot of people would have denied that you could ever make a malaria vaccine. It was just going to be too difficult. The mood has changed, the technology has improved, and the bar has been moved upwards from not just getting a good vaccine to thinking of eradicating malaria from the planet.